Hey Hoopers, welcome. As people come on in, it's really important for this session that we have a journal. So if you don't have your journal or you don't have something to write on, then please go and do that now. We're going to start in just a moment, but I want you to feel like you can set up, grab what you need, maybe a cup of tea, maybe uh, something comfy, Hey, Camilla, welcome. It's so beautiful. I wish that I could see you, uh, but it's so nice that we get to connect in this way. And I get to see many of you every day um, on this little device. Isn't it crazy? Hey, Lexi, welcome in. So as people are jumping in, we're going to start in a few seconds. As people are jumping in, there is a chat box if you want to type anything in there. Hey, Chris, you can do that. If I miss questions, we're going to have a Q&A at the end. So if there are questions, and if you're watching the recording of this, I'll just put in, I know I'm like thinking into the future. If you're watching a recording of this, then you can ask me questions down below. It will probably be on YouTube as well. I'll pop it up there because lots of people are asleep right now. It's 10 a.m. here in Australia. Uh, if you have any questions before we start, just let me know if you can't hear me. If for whatever reason the internet drops out or something happens, life happens, we're going through a lot right now, so I know that you're all really good at adapting, uh, I will record this and I will send it to you. But fingers crossed, all goes well, and we get to stay together here for about one hour. Now, again, if you're just jumping in, a few people are jumping in, you will need a journal, but we'll get to that really soon. So. Welcome, my name is Deanne Love and this particular workshop is about boosting confidence, creativity and clarity and why I chose those three major things that we, we really need to hold on to as Hoop Teachers is because that's what everyone asks me about, that's what everyone talks about, like how do I, how do I have the confidence to do the things that I want to do, how do I stay creative to keep creating all of these ideas. And clarity is a really huge one that lots of people skip over and we're going to get into that. And it's about how do I be clear with my message? How do I know who I am and how do I share that? So let's get into it. Hey, Teresa, welcome in. So I am Deanne Love. If you don't know me, uh, I am the creator of hooplovers.tv. You can find me a lot of times on Instagram and over on YouTube and also Hoop Love Coaching. A lot of you are Hoop Love Coaches already. Welcome in. If you are teaching hooping, you want to teach hooping, you haven't been teaching hooping, but it's it's in the vision, welcome. And I know that there are a few hoopers who don't want to hoop at all. Uh, sorry, <laughs> hoopers that don't want to hoop at all. Maybe they're just dancers. Uh, hoopers who don't want to teach. But you might share it in some way. So you don't have to officially be a teacher, but there's going to be times where you want to share. And maybe the confidence, the clarity, and the creativity is really going to help you with that. doesn't matter if you're on the world stage or if you're in your backyard. Very important to remember. Uh, from Argentina, welcome. So blessed to be here. You've been following for seven years. Good number. Okay. Thank you for being here. So... There are hoopers all around the world and it is continuously growing. And even though 2020 and 2021 from Gippsland in Victoria, welcome. Oh, what a time. What a time on this whole entire planet. Um, yes. So speaking of that, even though last year and this year have been terrorizing, to say the least, what I get to witness is that the hoop community is continuously growing. And I know this because more people than ever are coming to YouTube to learn. More people than ever are asking me. And I didn't think this was possible because I thought we'd reached our, our limit. But more people than ever are asking me, what do I do to start? How do I, how do I, what hoop do I need? Where do I go? Where can I find a teacher in my area? Um, and so you play a really, really important role in this because there are more humans than ever needing to move their body for focus. 
super important. Okay, again, we've got some new humans here. Welcome, Kathy. Hey, Julia. Please grab a journal. If you don't already have it, then go and get something that you can write on and write with because this is an interactive workshop. It's not just me telling you all the things you need to do. This is you're going to be creating this yourself. So you will need something to write on. Um, some people like to write notes in their phone. That distracts me. <laughs> I am an easily distracted human. How about you? But if you do have, um, hey, Judith, welcome. If you do have a note-taking journal, you do, you do you. Very important. Um, welcome, Steph. So switch off distractions. I have turned my phone to do not disturb. It's the best feeling in the world. It's the best. And it also, um, I turn off my, my data so that I can't look at Instagram. I can't. Sometimes it's important. It's really important. Get your questions ready. If you have questions, we'll have a Q&A at the end. And I know some people like to ask questions all the way through. You can put that in the chat box. If I miss it, it's best to keep the questions till the end because then it doesn't distract us. Um, but the chat box is there for you. So welcome, Carla. This is a really big one. And you can start to journal now if you want to. Grab that journal and write it down or just keep it in your mind. Um, or you can drop your answer in the chat box. Why do you want to teach hooping? I ask this at the beginning of all of my workshops, my teacher workshops, because our why is going to be our biggest anchor. Why am I even doing this? And some days we might ask ourselves that question in this, with this attitude, like, oh, why? Why am I doing this? <laughs> I think I sent an email recently um, and the title was teaching hooping is not all love and light. It's not. There's no, there's not, it's not all sparkly, perfect. It doesn't come so easily. I don't live my whole entire life feeling completely confident, clear, creative. Mm -mm, no, that would, that wouldn't be human. <laughs> We're still human. So give yourself a moment to think about your why. Why do you want to teach hooping or why are you teaching hooping? If you've been teaching for a while, uh, then maybe this why has changed. So why do you want to teach hooping? Hey, Tanika is saying that there are some sound issues and that's why I also have the presentation up. So the presentation will guide if you can't hear me for whatever reason. Thanks, Camilla. It's all, my sound is traveling all the way to Brazil. How does that happen? Now, if anyone would like to share their why, you can pop it in the chat box if you like. Why do you want to teach UP? Why do you teach UP? Why would anyone do something so spectacular and fun and big? Why would you want to guide others through movement and joy and healing and unlocking? Holly says freedom. Freedom for me is my number one life value. It is my core freedom. And that is challenged every single day. Carla says to know magic. Teresa says, I'm not necessarily wanting to be a teacher, but I love sharing how and why it has helped me. That is always when I get a bit rocky, Teresa, and this is a beautiful thing. A lot of us don't, we might not necessarily think that we want to share it. And, but sometime down the track, someone might say to you, Hey, can you teach me how to do that? And it might just be one person at one gathering or one person who comes to your home. So it doesn't have to be thousands of humans. It doesn't have to be classes every weekend. But it, this is about sharing or giving because what it has given you, and that is my why. I could not hold back because Hooping had given me so much and I couldn't really make sense of it. And the only way I could make sense of it, how huge and amazing it was, was to share it with other people. And then it was reflected back to me. I could see it. 
gifting the joy of hooping to others, the challenges, and that motivates your own hoop practice. Yes, you know, one of the big questions um, that I get when people want to teach hooping or they want to join the Hoop Love Coach training is they say, oh, well, uh, am I good enough? I don't really have that many tricks. Will this be good for my hooping? And I think that if I, this is just my own personal journey, if I had have just, um, just hooped on my own and had all that joyful fun, I definitely would have stuck to it. But sharing and teaching the challenges of that, my students always motivated me. It always kept me going. So that's a really great one. Yes, the magic I'm seeing, it feels so good. It's fun. I learn in this way. It makes me move. Sharing my favorite way to move, creativity, grow self-awareness, all of these things. I love to help people grow. Um, when others ask me to do things, it's difficult to show them how to do things. Um, and that can be a journey definitely for hoop teachers. So breaking down, and I know that many of you have looked to me in my teaching because how I break it down. Um, and that was a journey for me to learn. And it was only by showing up and sharing with others and observing like observing watching your students is the biggest superpower as a teacher because sometimes we can get so in our heads and trying to think like how do I teach this move and and how do I work this out but it wasn't for me until I realized that if I watch my students I ask questions and I listen really carefully that I was able to unlock how to break it down and many Everybody moves in different ways and everybody comes from a different background and has different injuries and trauma and um, different uh, ways that they hold their body. So watching and listening is the biggest teaching superpower and it takes time. They have to have the courage to show up and share as much as you can. Um, to help young women like me, working with confidence, insecurity, mental health issues, spread awareness and wellness, yes. Amazing. Reignite my passion, share my skills and the joy it brings me. This is so beautiful, Chris. So, so bringing back that some of that childlike and childhood joy uh, and then being able to bring that into our adult life and reconnect with that. Thank you so much for all of those answers. This is incredible. You will get time for your own journaling that you can you can keep to yourself because um, some things are going to be really precious to you working through this workshop. So, yes, for me, it's fun loving, it's energetic, it changes lives. Un undoubtedly, I, many times I used to think when I first started, like, it's just a circle. How? What am I even thinking? You know, this is, this, is this going to work? All of those self-doubt questions that all humans have. Um, but over the years, the decades, I have realised it, actually changes it changed my life and it actually changes other humans lives that's not just something that i've i've kind of dreamed up i've witnessed it over and over and over and over again the abundance i always think of abundance as two things um and if you're a hoop love coach you know this i think of abundance as community or human connections and then also the abundance that we think of in terms of financial support or um, supporting us to, to live our lives. And for many humans around the planet, Hooping is able to support them in that way. And lots of people don't, <laughs> don't go out as hardcore as me and make it their whole entire life focus. And I'm not, I never, I actually never, I'm not one of those people who are like, do everything, quit your job, jump off the dip. I'm never, ever going to say that because every single person's path is going to be very different. Just because for me I was like very single focused, um, I found now I'm kind of the reverse of a lot of people. Like I found now 10, almost about 14 years this year down the track, I can start to diversify, whereas in the beginning I had to be very focused. But other people, other creatives, other humans that I know like to have lots of different projects. So you have to do it in your way. You have to. And opportunities. I can't 
there's not enough time ever in this whole entire life to explain the opportunities that hooping brings. Just not enough. Okay, but let's talk about the big three things that we are really going to connect with in this workshop. Confidence, creativity, and clarity. They're not just buzzwords. They're the underpinning of helping us to get up and share, get up and go, and not give up. And they're tricky ones. They're actually tricky. I'm not, this workshop is not about just making it like this magic. It's, it's big stuff. It's stuff that we have to work through each day. Now, um, you probably know all this stuff, but just in case someone is um, checking in and they don't know some of the stuff that I've done, and this is not about bragging, this is just saying that I have used the confidence or I've worked on my confidence a lot, <laughs> the creativity and the clarity to do some of these things, teaching workshops all around the world, which sadly is not happening anymore, very sadly, um, creating hundreds and hundreds of tutorials on YouTube. Now, this list is not to make you feel like, oh, I, I can't do that or I haven't done that or I won't do that. But if those feelings are coming up, save that because in this journaling exercise, it's going to be really interesting to see how we can unpack some of that. Like, oh, I get it every single day. Every day I'm like, oh, I haven't done that or I should do that. They're normal feelings. Feel them. We're going to feel them. Um, I have planned, taught, and marketed over 60 courses on learn.hooplovers.tv. When I think about that, I'm like, who is this human? <laughs> How did I do that? Confidence, creativity, and clarity. Just wait. Trained over a 1,000 teachers, who teachers around the world, and taught. I was used to teach. Sadly, not anymore, not here, and we have restrictions. I don't know about other parts of um, the planet, but I'm assuming that as hoop teachers, we are adapting to the ways that we can teach. Um, so I've done a lot of teaching, and these three things have supported me. Let's drop into the first one, confidence. Whew, it's a big one. Now, when I think about confidence... I think about overcoming my self-doubt. I think about being able to, to share with others and stand up and, and feel okay, sometimes not even good, sometimes not even amazing, okay to be able to do that. But when I looked up the definition of confidence and I really like to unpack like what we, we create these stories and these meanings around things that, and we tell ourselves, oh, I can't do that because I don't have confidence or I wish that I had the confidence to do that. And I'm a very big storyteller. I, my brain is on story mode all the time, always telling myself like what ifs and things that could go wrong. And I always have to train myself to put myself in that other space, not neglect my true feelings, but put myself in that other space of what could go right. And some of the ways that I have done that is basically this definition of confidence. It's a feeling or a belief that I can have faith in someone or something. Now, guess what I have faith in? Continuously have faith in. When my confidence, my personal confidence is low or I think something's not going to work. The faith that I always have is in the joy of hooping, the healing of hooping. It's actually in the hoop itself so, or in the practice of the hooping. So when I don't have confidence, when I'm not feeling like or I'm doubting myself, I go back to this idea of like I have faith or have confidence in my why and many of you have already written it here your why your, that's why I asked you that question why you want to teach because when we don't when we might not have the confidence in ourselves we can rely on that why so grab your journal we're going to have some time and it's this is really important this is rather than just listening to me to write down to journal out to map it out, and I, <laughs> okay, I have to confess, I have 
maybe not hundreds. I have a lot and they're full. Um, and this is one of the, the big tips that I'm going to give you today is like write this stuff down and out. If it's stuck in your body and your brain, that the two writing is a form of movement. When we're stuck and, and it's right here, writing sometimes, I know a lot of people are like writing is really challenging for me. And yes, honor that. It can be very challenging. I encourage you or invite you to flip that thinking into writing as a form of of movement, of creative movement. Um, and if for you right now you're sitting and you're watching this and you're like, I don't feel like writing, two choices. You can invite yourself to focus on this writing or you can move it through your body. But staying still is not an option. <laughs> so just like not an option, not getting stuck. So setting yourself up somewhere that you can either move through your body or through your writing. I would invite you to write down an answer, any answer that comes to you right now that says or that describes or that shows how you feel. When do you feel most confident? I'll just give you a moment writing down what comes up. When do you feel most confident? And yes, some of you can use the chat box if you like, but if you are moving your body or if you are choosing to write down, and I highly recommend writing this down because you're going to need it soon and it's something you can come back to. So stay interactive, stay focused. When do you feel most confident? This is your answer, not someone else's. And our second confidence prompt is what stands between you and taking courageous steps, whatever your courageous steps are. It might have to do with hoop teaching. Um, it might have to do with practicing your hooping. We're hoop related at the moment. I know your, your life is probably very grand and has all these different moving parts. But as a hoop teacher or a hooper, what stands between you and taking these courageous steps? Remembering that your answers are your answers and they're worthy and they're valid and they don't need to be compared to anyone else. What stands between you and taking the courageous steps that you, that you have in your mind, that you have in your body, that you have in your vision? And if you don't know, you don't know. We don't know everything. We can't know everything. But you can write as a form of movement, as a form of creative movement, I don't know. It's the unknown. I don't know what's holding me back. I don't know why I can't do these things that I think up in my mind. It's a huge one for me. I don't know a lot. <laughs> and the, the older I've gotten, the more I realize, I don't know. And our third confidence question, writing these down or moving these through, what actions, whatever comes to mind, going off the back of I don't know, Something may spring to mind. It might not happen now. It might happen 
when you're making breakfast. It might happen in a dream. It might happen when you're driving your car. But allow this question to filter through your mind. What actions can I take to move beyond these limitations? So what action could I do if I'm feeling stuck in my body? What action could I take? And you know your own edge, so you're you're always playing with that as a creative soul. You know where your safety, where your boundary is. What action can I take to move beyond these limitations? We're not forcing or pushing. We're stepping in with joy. We're stepping in with compassion. And so from this, this is a really huge tip that I can give to you about the confidence. We're going to move through creativity and clarity is to create a manifesto and Some people like to write these and put them on their fridge and some people like to write them and and have them in their journal and they wake up and read them every morning. But it has to be something that is active and visual. And a manifesto, and you you can start to write one now, but I really encourage you to come back to this and do it at another time where you can sit down with the answers to these first three questions. But if you do want to write now and you do want to create your manifesto, I've written an example here, something um, that might help you. So what you're going to do is write in terms of your confidence the things that you're good at. Yeah, like a vision board. It's kind of like that, but we're going to use we're going to use this creative writing. So you write the things that you're good at, the things that you value, your attitude, your behavior, you not someone else that you see on social media and they can come into our vision, you. What's important to you with your confidence? So you're going to create this, we call this a manifesto. It's like like a declaration. Some people might use, it's like affirmations. And so I want you to write like three or four sentences that are very active. And instead of things like, oh, I would like to be more courageous I wish that I wasn't so scared. And they're really important things, but we make it more active and more assertive. So you might write something like, I find courage by trying things in small steps. I like to feel supported and I'm most confident when things are playful, interesting and active. Like, get real with yourself. (laughs) This is how I do it. This is how I need to be supported. I recognize that I often overthink things. And that makes me feel like giving up even before I start. Let's be real. Let's be authentic. But I am going to start by teaching three of my friends this month. Or maybe it's writing an email to five studios this month, creating a plan for a beginner's workshop this month. So it's a declaration of confidence. Recognise where you're at, what you want and what you're going to do. Where you're at, what you want and what you're going to do. Remember, you can always come back to this. Creativity, woo When this word comes up, who thinks to themselves, I'm not an artist, I'm not creative, I can't do it, I'm not like one of those, you know, those kind of cool kids, those people that are always forever creating and inspiring. Watch those thoughts. I used to think that about myself. So when I first started hooping, I, I had been a primary school teacher and while I always wanted I always felt creative and and lived in this world of creativity um, in terms of movement or parties or fashion I thought that I was pretty boring I I wasn't an artist I didn't go to art school how could I be creative hooping completely changed that 
hands up, I can't see you, but hands up, hooping has changed that. It brings creativity. And creativity essentially is using your imagination, using your ideas to create something. Teresa's going to hand up. You are creating the act of movement of your movement, your motion. You are creating these patterns. You are creation. We're not going to get hugely deep here, but you know, you know it. <laughs> so this is going to be a big one for us because we are as humans, as hoopers, creative. However, sometimes, more hands up, the idea creation and turning that into a reality, there can be these big blocks like, oh, I've got so many ideas and then I, I don't, it's really hard. Grab your pen, grab your journal, let's move through this. So we did this with confidence, so we kind of know this process now. This is interactive, this is you. Write this down, move this through. What ideas do you have right now about teaching hooping or hooping, but mostly teaching hooping, that's the concept of this workshop, that are inspiring, that are exciting, that are nourishing? What ideas do you have right now? Keep it really simple. I have an idea to create a workshop for the women um, in my community, whatever, that's just what idea. And I would probably, you can come back to this time and time again, but pick one or two ideas. You might have a million. What ideas do I have that feel inspiring, exciting, nourishing, supportive, Write it down, move it through. What is that idea that comes to mind? Now, if you feel yourself or you, you can kind of hear your brain chatter, then going ahead into like, but I have this idea, but I can't do that because I, I you know, I, I can't do this and this and this is not ready. Don't worry about that bit yet. <laughs> Sometimes, many times, most of us creatives can jump far too head in, uh, far too far ahead into the future. So just, just be here with this idea now. Just the idea, not the execution, none of that. Not yet. Now writing down an answer, whatever answer comes up for you, to the second question, what holds me back from turning that idea into a reality? Just let it all go. Go on, write it all down. What is it? What are all of the human limitations? Is it money? Is it space? Is it time? Is it self-doubt? Is it, what is it? Become very authentic and real with yourself, but get it out of your head and onto the paper. Or if you're on a mat and you're moving through, what holds me back from turning that idea into a reality? Let it flow through and then the third question around our creativity is what actions can I take to give life to that idea? Something small. Imagine if that idea that you wrote down, you took one small action today. What could it be? not the huge to-do list. It becomes insurmountable. It's too much, too many things. And then for many of us, particularly in the creation process, 
we end up freezing and not doing it. Or in flight, we just run away, do something else. Because there's too many things to do. But if you could do one thing today, or if that feels like too much, this week, that was an action that could give life to that idea, what would you do? What could you do? What will you do? Okay. And so we turn all of that into something, a statement of declaration and affirmation. I like to think of it as a manifesto. And I've written one for my creativity or for our creativity. It's like a collective one, just as an example. So, again, we write down the things that you're good at, that you would like, and that feel important to you. A list, like four or five sentences for for your creativity manifesto. Again, it might not come out now. It might come to you while you're doing something else in flow, while you're hooping, dreaming, driving your car safely. And again, for example, instead of, I wish I was more creative, you could try rewording it, and that's a great wish, but you already are creative. You can try rewording it as, I have many ideas And I enjoy turning some of them into reality. We can't do them all, sadly. I feel most creative when I do something active. Anyone else? Not when I'm stuck. I feel most creative when I do something active. I use music and time in my hoop to come up with new ideas. And I am going to, here's the action. It's really important because this is a declaration. I am going to take two of the ideas that have been going around in my head this month and turn them into an action. And then I'll leave the others in my journal for next month or later in the year. So giving yourself time to write down your declaration of creativity. My only wish is that we could all get together and see or share our manifestos. Just taking a moment to get clear with yourself. And I know many of you said that you do write your ideas down in a journal. It's so important. I cannot stress enough. In Hoop Love Coach training, I often call it a brain dump. And some people creatively do this every single day. Get out what is swirling around in there leave it on the page, and sometimes, does anyone else do this? You can come back to your journals and be like, who wrote that? That's amazing. Wow, that's so creative. And that in that moment, it's like, I'm going to choose to take an action on this today or not. And that's where we need to get really discerning as creatives because there's so much stuff that you could do, but you have to make that action on what you can and will do today. Yes, voice memo ideas on your phone too. Or videoing yourself. Um, another way, so for to go back to the confidence one, a lot of people tell me that they don't like to see their own image or they don't quite like to show up on video. Totally own it. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. Um, But one little way that we can practice uh, is to video yourself talking to the camera, but you're talking your ideas or your memos. Beautiful. 
beautiful declarations coming through. They are yours. They're very important to your creative process. Okay, let's get clarity. Let's get clear. <laughs> clarity. This is a tricky one, but a very, very essential one because we need to be clear about what we're doing. We need to be clear about who we are. That's hard. Um, and then we need to share that message with our students. What is it that you're offering? Where is it? How much is it? What will it look like? What will your students get from it? All, all of the clarity is around all of our messaging. Who am I and what do I share? Yes, choosing to use music to create new movement. Absolutely. Inspiration and motivation is everywhere. And some days it feels like it's nowhere and that's okay. Wait, clarity, let's go back. So it's the quality or the condition of being very clear and easy to understand. This has been something that I have tried to practice over and over and over in my teaching. I want my students to feel like in this very confusing process and journey of hooping and opening up to new skills that I am very clear in how I break it down. <laughs> so that's a practice of mine. Like clarity is really important. So it's about being clear with yourself and clear with others. And this is a huge topic that we could just do like weeks and months and months and lifetimes and years and forever working out, making things clear. It's like decluttering. It's like, which is tricky. <laughs> um, so, but we don't have years and months to work on the clarity, but it might come up for you in other times when you think, how can I make this message a little bit more clear? For example, if you're doing a promo of your class on Instagram or something, or if you're um, making a poster for your workshop, how can I make this more clear? If I was a student, and this is how I often do it, if I was the student, would this make sense to me if I knew nothing? Okay, this is a rapid fire. So we're going to do this really quick because it's whatever comes to your head straight away. So grab your pen, grab your journal, grab your mat, however you're doing this, however you're moving through it. I'm going to ask the questions. You write down the answers a little bit faster this time. So, and actually these questions, they're stolen. I've taken them. They're from the preparation pack of the Who Blob Coach training. Um, and the preparation pack is a lot about working out where you're at, who you are and how you want to teach. So let's go. When I am at my best, I am, could be different every day, every moment. When I am at my best, I am, yes, it, it can be really easy to get hung up on these. Just let, what comes to mind? Relaxed, hungry, sad, angry. Moving, dancing, hooping, anything that comes to your brain or your body. Next one. The expertise that I have to share is own it. What is it? The expertise that I have to share is what are you really good at? You're really good at many things. We often, as humans, don't own that. It might feel like it's unrelated to hooping. But as a teacher or someone who's sharing, so there are so many elements. And what you're good at is going to come into what you have to share. So the expertise that I have to share is... Next one. Others describe me as, here is a tip. It does not have to be love, light and sparkles. No. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That is one part of many, many, many beautiful traits. Shy. Love it. Do you know how many of your students are wildly shy and they need that mirror? Content, beautiful. 
how many of your students need that grounded, calm, honest force. I'm excitedly motivated by what? What motivates you? Write down one or two words. Teresa, I knew music for me too. Creativity. You know, I almost get like really um, disgruntled. I get really, I don't know, agitated when I can't find new good music that like inspires me. I get really like unstable because that's my source. That's my motivation. Love everything that's coming down, coming through, learning new things. It's um, others' passion inspiring my own. Yeah. That's so beautiful, Julia. We can often um, see that as comparison or we can let others who are shining and, and showing up in big ways often I hear, and this is it's just being human, being honest, we can be like, oh, they're already doing it or they're so good or, you know, they started 10 years ago and I'm just starting now and own all of those thoughts. Like they are truly valid but big, big, big overarching. That doesn't mean that you can't start now. That has, that weighs no weight at all on your journey. Completely separate. The best three words to describe me are bam, 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 go. One, two, three. The best three words to describe me are today, right now, <laughs> might be different tomorrow, might be different this afternoon. Does anyone notice that they're ever changing? That also applies to your teaching. So right now you might decide that you want to teach absolute total beginners. I would highly recommend that. It's a very, very beautiful journey. But in a year's time, you might be developing a different skill or a different style. But start here, start now. This is a huge one. I believe my purpose on this planet is. I almost fell off my chair. To shine a light in dark places. I believe my purpose on this planet is. Next one. I am truly passionate about. I am truly passionate about burritos, <laughs> tacos. I am purely passionate. Do I say purely, truly passionate about moving my body however I can? I am truly passionate about <laughs> my purpose is to eat tacos. Yes, it's my 2021 goal. This last one, my personal style is, and this is not about just like we place, there's so much on social media about what things look like on the outside without too much depth to them. Um, but your personal style, how you show up and how you own your, how you present must be authentic. But it is a form of connection with others. It just is. Steph's eating brekkie. Oh, <laughs> Okay, you can come back to these questions anytime and see how they change. So your clarity manifesto. I'm going to quickly read mine out because I know some of you have questions about the Who Love Coach training and we're do, our timing is perfect because we are in flow. So come back to this, your clarity manifesto. Honestly, clarity being clear, saying what it is, simplifying, simplifying things, simplifying 
your to-do list, simplifying your actions, simplifying your message, simplifying your teaching, not overcomplicating, it will be your superpower. I know I always say observation in a practical teaching sense is your superpower, but clarity, simplification. So instead of, I would like to be more clear with my marketing, actually that's really good, you could write, I'm going to write a clear and concise lesson plan for a workshop that I would like to teach at in studios in my community. So very clear about what it is that you're going to do. I'm going to spend one hour each week this month creating a vision that is more simplified so that I'm not overwhelmed by all of my amazing ideas. Um, I am passionate about sharing movement as a medicine to support healthy bodies and mental health. I believe my purpose in this life is to be a teacher. So you can take from those questions and create a statement, a declaration, and I highly recommend doing this for clarity's sake. Otherwise, it's all up here. Okay. So... Many times I hear, I'm not good enough, I'm not as good as, I don't have enough, I'm not ready yet. Look at those, observe those, own those. And here are, I'm going to go through this in rapid fire, a few tips from each of those, the confidence, the creativity and the clarity that help me get through this, that may help you get through these too. We all have these thoughts. There's every day. It's okay. We're in this together, this human experience. Confidence. Take my tips, my hot tips. Now, you've probably already come to these um, realizations through all of that, that creative movement and journaling. Take small but continuous steps. And you'll hear this, this floating around all the time, like, be consistent, show up. Make it small, though. How many of us, how many of you, I have these big, grand ideas. They're supreme. They're amazing. They're incredible. But I can't do them. They're too big but small, ever. And find one or two things that you really have faith in. I have faith that hooping changes lives. So no matter how I waver, how I, I will always come back to that. That is my anchor, that is my why. Creativity, write down your ideas. I feel like you're already all doing that because you're just like onto it. If you've forgotten, if you've fallen out of practice, it's okay. Pick it back up. It's like hooping. Write down your ideas. Get them out of your head and create the ones that feel closest. I work with lots of different amazing humans and many of us have this thing that we do where we have this big grand idea and then we end up doing nothing because it's too far away. So for creativity, my biggest tip is create the ones that feel closest. I can do that today. I can do that this week. And then that will lead to the next point. And clarity. Own your special source. You can't be anyone else but you. It's impossible. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, whatever, whoever you were thinking, <laughs> that you, might, you may transform over this lifetime, but you are you. And owning that is going to give you that superpower to be able to communicate. Simplify the steps, start small, start now, start with what you have and who you are. I'm not, not like a preach, this is, like, <laughs> this is how I've gotten through to teach and share with so many and I know it's your passion because uh, it's you're here, you're showing up. So this little part right now is Hoop Love Coach training but it also is an open question um, Q&A. So if you have questions about Hoop Love Coach training, but if you've already done Hoop Love Coach training, then you might have other questions. So that is open to you now in the chat box. Maybe you're just still there writing. <laughs> Maybe you're just moving on your mat. But if you have questions about teaching, if you have questions about what we have moved through today, the confidence, the creativity, the clarity, let me know. If you are coming to do Hoop Love Coach training with me, it starts on the 26th of July. Oh, you love to see the pictures. Yeah, I miss Brazil as well. Um, and for the, I do like a lot, like it's actually really hard to think about. So I'm like, 
stay focused. Um, for those of you who have done Hoop Love Coach training or you're doing it with me, it's an online training. Yes, you can. These are, I'm just answering questions that people always ask every time. You can stream download 24 seven. Um, and you can learn at your own pace. So some people are like, I don't know if I can get it done in 12 weeks. That's okay. Many of the humans that are in this chat right now are continuing and moving and we're connecting. Yes, Carla did the Hoop Love Coach training. Now I'm talking to my local parks and rec about offering classes. Also, if you don't know Camilla, Carla, humans all around the planet who are teaching and our teaching doesn't have to look like this one particular, like I turn up and I teach every single day at a yoga studio. No, there's so many different ways that we have been teaching around the planet. Thank you, Julia. I'm going to click through these. If anyone has any questions, I'm here for you. How did the journaling feel? <laughs> Lacey's like, yes, that's awesome color. I wish you were near me. Judith says, will we be discussing different learning styles such as visual, tactile, as well as different between teaching children and adults? Not the teaching children and adults stuff um, because, yes, they are very different and I have... Um, I was a primary school teacher and taught many, many, many little humans how to hoop and I do it in a very different way. So Hoop Love Coach Training is about, yes, the teaching styles of adults and what works for different learners and different techniques as well. Um, or often in hooping we call it troubleshooting. <laughs> uh, if someone is not getting or not, or feeling a bit deflated or, and in the second module, there is 100 tricks. And I know there's more than 100, but the 100 foundation um, that you, that you really want to start all of your students off on. And we work on um, how to share that in different ways and how, like if someone is not, yeah, not feeling it or, or not, they can't, um, or they're not understanding the, the verbal breakdown, how to show them visually or or how to give them support in a tactile way. Teresa says, I love journaling. Do you do it every day? I don't. No, I used to. Um, and I go through phases like anything, like any practice. I go through phases where I'm like, whoa, I've got to um, get this out of my brain. Sometimes like this one was a daily and it also depends on on kind of my lifestyle practices as well. Um, Bonnie says, I'm very new at this and I'm looking forward to the next steps. Beautiful. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I hear a lot of people ask me, how did I know that I was ready to start teaching or was that a thing? And I pretty much knew as soon as I, well, I mean, the first like six months, I was just so obsessed with just who being on my own um, and that hasn't stopped. But then it became very clear to me that I wanted to start to build very slowly over the years ways to share this with other humans. How to motivate people who are not used to online classes. 2020, 2021, who would have thought I didn't even, and I have been teaching online classes for a very long time. I could never have forecast what has happened on the planet and that so many people um, are now learning in their homes, from their homes for really important reasons. How do I motivate or how would you motivate people? Um, last year, I actually did a training as a student with another online teacher who teaches, who supports women's circles and who does nonlinear movement and her teaching style. And I, I thought, you know, I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm like well practiced in this teaching. Her te she's in the U S um, and all of her teaching was online. And the one thing that I really learned from her to motivate people was to stay really connected 
like act as if that human's right there, but also be very structured. They were the two things. And I thought I had that down pat in my own teaching. But if you're asking also for um, how to motivate people to come online, like to, to actually come to your classes, um, what I find works is creating some examples or doing videos outside of, even like this kind of thing, outside of, and it's, it's more work, <laughs> obviously it's more work, but it's like here's what we're going to do and create a video or here's, um, here's an example of the class. If people are like, mm, I don't know about doing things online, like it's like clarity. It's the, the third point being really clear about um, what it is that you're going to offer. And also, if it's not really work, if you're finding people are saying the same thing over and over, like, I don't like online classes, if you can, ask them why. Ask them what it is about the classes that they don't like. And maybe, maybe you can offer a solution to that. Maybe you can't. Some people just don't like learning online. It's really, it is a really challenging time. So, yeah, I would say create examples or videos outside that show what you're going to do and then ask them how you could, if you can, <laughs> change or support that what might encourage them to come online. Julia said, had some mental blocks this morning, won't lie. Good, don't lie. <laughs> I have mental blocks all day long, um, but had some good moments of clarity. This is perfect. You know, sometimes I will go to like, um, well, not these days, but I'll go to a weekend workshop and I'll be stuck and stuck and I'm like going there to have some kind of epiphany and it won't come to me until the next time I practice. Or, But, but those ideas are there. They're floating around. The questions, it's just stuff that builds that's in there now. Like you'll be thinking, how could I make this more clear? Or, oh, I should write my ideas down or something, whatever sticks for you, whatever sticks for you. Thanks for being here, Julia. Steph says, will we get to rewatch? Yes. Yes, definitely. Hopefully it's recording. <laughs> I rely on technology. Um, I've only been hooping since February watching your courses and tutorials. I'm currently completing my horticultural studies, so I'm not quite ready to sign up for Hoop Love Coaching. That is totally fine. Um, but it's definitely something that I'd love to do soon. Amazing. Yes, that's the thing. It's like that we're all, there's no rush. We're all on this. It's like things will come back and stick and ideas will change. Good luck with your horticultural studies. Um, uh, Dee Dee says, I have limitations with my hands that make it difficult to do some moves. Would it be possible to complete the training? Do you have modifications included? This is really important because all, lots of all bodies move and have different um, structures and capabilities and strengths and weaknesses and limitations. Very important because often very important to know that as a teacher because we often get to see the most spectacular, perfect, precise hooping, but that's not what exists in our classes. That's not what most humans are not circus hoopers or, um, you know, we're not going off to Cirque du Soleil. We have many variabilities in our body. So I often hear, more, more often I hear that, um, there are back injuries or shoulder structural injuries and a lot of people prefer to do off body. Um, so the beautiful thing about hooping is that there is so much variety that if there feels like there's a limitation in one area, there's a strength in another. Um, a hoop love coach from many, many, many years ago, Angela, she works, or actually her, her teaching has changed quite a lot. Um, but for a long time, she worked with older humans um, whose mobility and even balance and structure and standing up um, 
was no longer there. So she created this whole amazing curriculum around seated hooping. And this came from her, a limitation that she had because she started hoop love coach training and then broke her knee or had to have knee reconstruction and she could not stand up. Um, and so from that limitation, she developed something that was very supportive for students who also had limitations. Okay. I'm reading your beautiful. <laughs> um, I have had wrist and forearm issues. I hope I'm not skipping anyone. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and experience, Deanne. I wouldn't have got to this point of being a hoop teacher without you. Thank you. That's very exciting. Um, you may have, you know, <laughs> just in a different way. I have so much faith in you. Okay, what's a good price for a one or two hour class? How much are people typically willing to pay for a class? Mm. This is going to change depending on where you live, uh, what your, um, the, a, a great way, this is a way that I generally handle pricing um, because it's so different in different parts of the planet, is for you to do some research and look at what other teachers are charging for yoga classes, ballet classes, specialty classes. So that might be um, if it exists in your area, like pole dancing or belly dance or acrobatics or do lots of research, have a look around at what's happening in your area. And then the next part of research is to look at what it's going to cost you to rent the space. Are you renting it for free? Um, uh, does it cost a lot of money to rent space in your city? So have a look at what other teachers are charging and then what your expenses are going to be. Um, and then you can usually come up with a price that's going to support you, that's going to be accessible for students in your city or your area. Um, and that is comparable to prices of other classes. It doesn't have to be low. There, there are a number of factors that go into pricing. So hopefully that helps. Um, I have had forearm issues and struggled heaps in the early days. I had PTSD and it was all in my mind. Once I started shifting my mindset, everything changed. What a miracle in motion you are. That's really incredible. That is a big, big story. Thank you for sharing that. It's huge. I have limitations all over my body. Thank you for sharing. Didi, your statement is so giving me inspiration to honour that instead of pushing myself where I can't go. Yeah. Another thing that I think is really valuable for us is, again, we, we often, I don't know um, what you're looking at or what, what is, is inspiring you and other hoopers, um, but, again, on, on social media, it's, it's just the best of. What we don't often see is the rest of the planet of movers, the rest of the communities. We, we just see those who either perform or teach or, or love being on video. <laughs> and that is a very, very, very small minority of the actual miracle of movement and the variety of body movement and limitations and capabilities and inspiration that is out there. So if you're one source of, of, and it's it's for everyone, it's what we see, is that please try to remind yourself that that is a very small and very specific style of body movement. It's not the majority. If my student is easily disheartened, are there easy ways to keep them on track and motivated? Um, <laughs> it's kind of like in many ways, uh, it's, it's communication and connection and being you more than a teaching technique is what I would say. I mean, there are, obviously there are techniques you could give them. So, okay, let's say, break this down. Let's say a student cannot keep the hoop 
on their belly. Um, and they, their mobility is okay. Their balance is okay. So you've gone through, like, it's, it's okay for them to, they don't have a back injury. Um, but for them, it's just, it's just not clicking. They haven't got the rhythm. So techniques would be change the size of the hoop, get a bigger hoop, perhaps ask them what music they love and use that. Um, perhaps so they can do techniques like um, perhaps they can get it to spin three times or maybe then they're going to work on spinning it four times, spinning it five times. Um, you could, if they're always standing still in one position, you can get them to move around. Um, I like to always use humour and laughter to kind of lighten the load. Um, perhaps you can do some other movement before that to get their body warmed up. So there's all those teaching techniques. Um, but the undercurrent of all of that is your connection with them. So being really open and vulnerable and playful, uh, perhaps telling stories about your journey as well, it's connection and communication as well. And some people hoop really easily straight away and they're like, yeah, I got this, and they're like zooming ahead. And others, it takes time. It takes a lot of time um, because it's a, it's a huge activity. Yes, Teresa, we must work with our bodies, not against it. It's a big lesson to learn. Thank you all. Okay, if there's no more questions, I've looked. These are good questions. These are really awesome. And what, what's really important about these questions is that they're going to inspire and help someone else as well, someone who's been thinking that same thing like, I've got students who are like, it's hard for me to, to get my students to come online or what about those students that just seem like they don't get it or don't, yep, so all of those. Thank you so much. Steph says I have, I'll have a quick few more and then I'm going to say a beautiful goodbye to you because I know you've been so focused and there's a lot, there's a lot that went into today. So um, I have limitations in my ankle. It will need a fusion one day, but it's not going to stop me from hooping. So my interest is also in how hooping can help with joint mobility and improvement. Yes, it is connection and it is flow internally as well and bringing hydration and movement, gentle movement <laughs> and nourishment to the joints is very, very essential for mobility and longevity and health and reduction in pain. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Mel. So beautiful. Thanks, Sarah. And yes, Julia, it's it very different. Our bodies are very different, if that's what you're saying. Um, definitely a growing experience as a teacher. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Young, young bodies, young students, very different to adults. That's so incredible. Lorette had to use um, a hoop that was filled with rice in order to get the hang of the movement. Yes. So this this myth that like people just pick up a hoop and it's like amazing superstar mm -mm. it takes a lot of time for most of us yeah one's filled with water there's so many variations thank you so much Carla for being here thank you Kira thank you so much Steph thank you to all of you get in touch with me if you have any more questions definitely go back I'll send you the recording this afternoon go back over the recording thanks Camilla see you in Brazil um, I'll go back over I'll go back over any of the questions and journal as prompts to journal anytime you're feeling a little bit stuck um, because you will know the answer or reach out to me if you like. If you are joining me for Hoop Love Coach Training, we start on the 26th. If you have any more questions about that, you can contact me at hello at hooplovers.tv. Let me see, maybe here. Did I or hooplovecoaching.com slash July 2021. How? How? Good vibes, Julia. Thank you so much. Thanks, Didi, Camilla, Teresa, all of you, all of you humans. Whether you wrote to me a million times or you're in your own space, big love to you and huge thank yous. Keep doing the amazing work. Incredible. See you soon. Bye, Diana. Thank you.